the most complete coverage of high school football of Southwest, Southside, and Central Virginia with John Apicella. It's week three of the prep season, and it's also Battle of Bristol week, and I expressly remember saying that I was out. I know, but they think you're in, so that means we are all already in and ready to roll for another week here on First and Ten. So I've got a plan, and it might get us both killed, but if it works, it'll be a total bust story. Lord Botetod coach Jamie Harless was not happy. A rugged week of practice appears to be just what the doctor ordered because the Cavs played lights out tonight in Bassett. Here we go. There's Coach Harless. Always intense regardless of the score. Lord Botetod's quarterback Preston Martin keeping it for 23 yards. He's in the house. 42 to nothing. We're in the second quarter. Botetod again. This time Adrian Taylor handed off to Evan Petrie. He's in from 13 yards out. 49 nothing. Still in the first half. Bassett gets on the board. Dylan McKinney to Junior Cocolobo. He passes it to Justin Taylor who is gone goodbye, but that was all Bassett had tonight, 77 to seven. I think message received from Lord Botetop. In season with our first and 10 player of the year banquet to wrap it up to Hidden Valley Country Club for our 12 players of the week. Honored with a special night, Ferrum head coach Rob Grandy was the keynote speaker tonight, bringing his message to the local players, many of which will be headed off to play at the next level in the next year or two. Our own Aaron Brookshire presented the first annual Spirit Award to Magna Vista High for their efforts in the Friday First and Ten kickoff, which airs during Virginia today. All of which led up to Stanton Rivers' Grayson Overstreet winning Player of the Year after he rolled up nearly 3,000 yards and 46 scores including a VHSL state scoring record. Coach of the year, there he is, Salem Stephen Magenbauer, getting it done for his Spartans back-to-back -back Group 4A state titles. All right, to the high school ranks, and Northside's Carlos Boogie Basham will take his considerable defensive end skills to Wake Forest. At GW Danville, the Eagles' successful football program sends four to the next level. Tim Glass to NC State, Curtis Brooks to Cincinnati, Donald Smith to Hampton, and Malik Henderson to North Carolina Central. Meanwhile, back in Roanoke, PH star quarterback under coach Alan Fiddler, Q. Sean Calfee is headed to the University of Charleston in West Virginia. Meanwhile, Lord Botetot reached the school's first ever state final, and senior Bradley Lithgow returned from a knee injury to help lead the way. The speedster will head up the road to VMI next season. At Glenver, the Highlanders program sends two more to the college ranks. Quinton Alls and Zachary Deck are both headed to UVA-wise. The Generals have followed up a 10-0 regular season and a first-round ouster in the NCAA playoffs a year ago with a tougher non-conference schedule. And that change, although it's left them with a pair of losses, is paying dividends now, with the big cash out hopefully coming when the postseason arrives. Today's win was the Generals' 12th straight in the ODAC, and at 4-0 moves Coach Scott Abel's team firmly into the driver's seat for an NCAA playoff berth. VMI looks to be a much improved football team from a year ago. Sports director John Apicello has more from Lexington on the Cadets. VMI closed out their spring with a spirited scrimmage and one clear goal in mind, to get this team back to the winning ways of its storied past. Number one, they believe in themselves a little bit. We had some measure of success, uh, not enough in the victory column, but we played 18 and changed points closer in a SOCON game. So they were in games. They know if we find a way to make one more play and win those close games that they'll be where they need to be. The Keydets quest for a winning season dates back 35 years with just two 500 seasons in all of that time. So this year's squad understands just how important this turnaround could potentially be. That's, that's, I mean, we talk about it every day. I mean, we're tired of losing around here, so we want to turn it around and get this school back on the map for winning football. Four of VMI's losses a year ago were a touchdown or less, so the corner for this team is but a step away. In Lexington, John Apicello, WSLS 10 Sports. Sports director John Apicello was in Martinsville with more. Gibbs had four cars in the final eight, but none had anything for Mr. Martinsville. Jimmy Johnson racked up his ninth victory at the historic track, and he has punched his ticket to Homestead and the final four. I uh, can't believe the way our first half of the race went and then the way it finished up with a, a dominant last run. Um, just couldn't be more thrilled and, and honestly more proud of uh, our race team. The 48 team's task for the next two weeks, make what tweaks are necessary because it's all about Miami now and number seven. 
Alyssa, the 20 to 3 run that ended the half for UVA pretty much took all the drama out of this game, with the possible exception of the dizzy spell which Tony Bennett had at the end of the first half. But as he told us, he's going to be a OK, and his team was just fine too. Once we knew he was all right, I think it kind of helped him calm everybody's nerves about that. Obviously, it's a scary situation when your head coach goes down, but uh, we were happy to see he was okay and just be able to go out in the second half and play, play good ball. I think i just been a little under the weather the last couple of days, and I think I was a bit dehydrated. And then when you're squatting down and you get up quick, I just um, grayed out or blacked out a little bit. I was saying something to London. And I uh, had more Powerade than I've ever had in my life right now. Praying just to make sure that he was okay. And... This is, yeah, it worked. You know, I, I, I healed him. Saturday, UVA looks forward to Butler in the round of 32. This is not a team to be trifled with. They handled Texas Tech in round one right here in Raleigh. For now, at the NCAA tournament, I'm John Apicello, WSLS 10 Sports. Mark Knight in Roanoke Sports as hockey returns to the Star City after more than a 10 year absence. The Rail Yard Dogs welcome Knoxville to town. Let's get you out. And there's the ceremonial, yeah, dropping of the first pucks. And here we go. Knoxville. A Andrew Bonazza. But Brandon Anderson there for the stuff. A little later on, Mark Post and shoots. Save there. Brandon Anderson doing a great job in goal. Eventually, Knoxville, Jake Rivera with the big one-timer right there, one to nothing. Later on, Knoxville would make it two to nothing on a Kyle McNeil goal. Two to nothing was your final, but more importantly, hockey is back in Roanoke. We've got four new ACC coaches, two from the Commonwealth. The last time UVA and Virginia Tech had coaching changes simultaneously, the year was 1974. So we've got a pair of new coaches meshing with their programs and learning their new home state. There is much anticipation in Blacksburg as the Hokies are set to welcome a new head coach to the sidelines for the first time since 1987 as the Justin Fuente era hits the ground running here on Saturday. Good evening, everyone. Thanks uh, for joining us for the Hokie home opener Virginia Tech football special. I'm John Apicello, and the Hokies are set to kick off the 2016 season against Liberty. And, of course, it's coming up Saturday afternoon right here at Lane Stadium. Change and tribute have been the operative word since November of 2015. Frank Beamer continues to be honored for his legendary career and the indelible mark he left on this program. While Coach Fuente is busy installing an offense that was nothing short of sensational at Memphis. And your first recipient, we find out today of the special team's honor of wearing Frank Beamer's 25, will go to Stephen Peoples. The last great Coliseum is set for perhaps the greatest battle in its illustrious history. This Saturday night at Bristol Motor Speedway, the football showdown decades in the making will be played. The University of Tennessee versus Virginia Tech on the gridiron. Good evening and thanks for joining us. I am John Apicello. It is a border war that could easily become a fixture in college football. We've got two marquee programs that are only 236 miles apart and just about halfway in between Bristol. So with that said, this is the first time these two teams have played since well, the Chick-fil-A Bowl back in December of 2009, when Frank Beamer's Hokies stomped Lane Kiffin's Vols 37 to 14. Vols fans, they have a good memory about the ones that got away, so redemption might be on their minds, while the Hokies will be seeking the validation that defeating an SEC team brings. Why not travel to the place most synonymous with college football tradition and excellence, Notre Dame? The 7-3 Hokies still in the running for an ACC title game berth, but we put all that on hold for a week as we come to South Bend, where we shall see if their presence wakes up the echoes, cheering her name, that, of course, of old Notre Dame. Good evening, everybody. Welcome to South Bend, Indiana, and the campus of the University of Notre Dame for our 30-minute special, History at the Golden Dome, as this will be an historic weekend for the Virginia Tech football program, meeting Notre Dame for the first time ever, and, of course, their first ever trip to South Bend in the process. It's a lot to process right now, but we'll start with the visit and the initial reaction of the Hokies as they prepare to come to this hallowed ground on Saturday. 
We've got two new leaders charging into the Commonwealth Cup arena. Bronco Mendenhall's UVA rebuild still trying to lay a solid foundation for the future. But UVA wants the frustration that has stretched to a dozen years and counting to end. The Hokies' transition to coach Justin Fuente has gone much smoother. This win is all that separates them from a date in the ACC title tilt. They'll meet again for the 98th time Saturday in Blacksburg. It's the Hokies and the Wahoos for the Cup, the bragging rights, and of course, the wait till next year. Good evening and happy Thanksgiving, everyone. I'm John Apicello along with Eric Johnson and Alyssa Ray back in the studio tonight. Saturday, Eric, the Hokies going for their 13th straight win in this rivalry, the longest active streak of any FBS in-state rivals. But there's a whole lot more going on than that. Absolutely. Obviously, they're looking at the conference and the ACC. We're approaching the start of championship weekend in college football, and the favorites are facing all the pressure like never before. Wins can get them into the playoff. A loss could spell doom, which brings us to Alyssa Ray live in Orlando, where the Hokies' path to upset victory would appear to surround the Tigers' turnover issues. The Hokies are in Charlotte preparing for their matchup against Arkansas Thursday. John Apicello joins us live, and he's watched the Razorbacks practice in Appy. They seem to fit that SEC <laughs> mold big. That's exactly right, Alyssa. When you look at them, it's hard to believe they're seven and five. They've got a 1,300 yard rusher. Their quarterback threw for 3,000 yards. And as you alluded to, they're pretty scary getting off the bus. Simply put, the Razorbacks are huge. They clearly take pride in living up to their Hogs namesake. Their offensive line averages six foot five, 327 pounds per man. They're definitely still big on film, but um, we've had some tough competition throughout the year um, against teams like Pitt, uh, North Carolina, Notre Dame, and um, just the way we prepare and uh, stay consistent throughout the week and the way, the way we get looks in practice. The Hokies will counter with skill and speed and a big man of their own in quarterback Gerard Evans. At 6'3", 238, he's an athlete pulling the trigger, and Arkansas knows the key to victory starts with stopping him. When he's on there playing very, very well, um, not only does he throw the ball effectively, you know, if the first couple decisions aren't there, he takes off running. He's a very All right, it was one of those from the outhouse to the penthouse games. Virginia Tech trailed 24 zip at the half, but came alive for their largest comeback in school program history and largest of the year, obviously, at the Belk Bowl. To Charlotte for the 9-4 and four Hokies, 7-5 and five Razorbacks of Arkansas out of the SEC. This one all Arkansas early. Two Hokies turnovers turn into 10 Arkansas points, including this Gerard Evans pick, which moments later leads to this. Picture-perfect Austin Allen to Cheyenne O'Grady. 28-yard connection, 17-0. It was 24-0 at the break. Hokies, different team, half number two. Forcing four turnovers, and then Evans to Sam Rogers. It's 24-14 at 24-21. How about Evans giving it to Trayvon McMillan? And there he goes, six yards, and the lead 28-24 early fourth quarter. Evans would add a rushing TD for good measure. 35-24 the final, and Justin Fuente gets his 10th win in his first year at the helm of the Hokies. 